All right, look, 2020 was a rough year for everybody, some worse than others. The video game industry as a whole saw a major surge in revenue, which is great, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't struggling hard, much like every other industry. Almost every single game studio saw major setbacks. Recalling 2020 from memory, it seems like there weren't really that many great games this year. And looking at just Nintendo specifically, the list gets thinned out even more. I'll save you the trouble if you were thinking of just scrolling to the end. The best game of 2020 from Nintendo is unequivocally Animal Crossing. Its status as a cultural phenomenon is unmatched by anything else that came out this year for reasons that I'm sure we'll get into. But when compiling a list for this video, I found a lot of great games that were quickly forgot about or quickly overshadowed by something else. It's worth taking a look back and seeing what other games we might have missed. Because Animal Crossing is like good, but like all you do is like collect bugs and shit. suck at making these. Was that in the script? Yeah, it was. Maybe it's my writing that I need to work on. For less than $10 a month, you can learn a new skill or sharpen that one you're already working on. Skillshare has courses ranging from graphic design, animation, creative writing, marketing, music, and even filmmaking and social media. Like for example, Creativity Unleashed, discover, hone, and share your voice online with Nathaniel Drew. And you can just try it for yourself and see how you like it. Right now, the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So butts, go on butts, over there and butts, 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 and then I'll butts, and then I'll put more butts. butts, 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 butts and butts, thank you, Skillshare, butts, for sponsoring butts, this video. Butts, butts, butts. Unfortunately, we won't be talking about ports, or else Super Mario 3D All Stars and Mega Man Zero Legacy Collection would be on this list. I had a lot of fun with both of those collections this year. Some of those games are better than a lot of games that I played this year in 2020, but. They're just collections of old games that add almost nothing fresh and new to those base games. So I'll be leaving them off the list. Also, I won't be talking about DLC. So the Pokemon DLC will be left off this list. Although I don't think I would have included that anyway. The Nintendo Switch was lacking in the first party AAA department this year, but there were some surprise hits that snuck out that you can only enjoy on the Switch. Like, good job. Yeah, remember that one? It was announced and launched on the same day on March 26th, and then very quickly forgotten about. It was part of Nintendo's Direct Mini Showcase. It's a very unique action puzzle game where you're the child of the CEO of a nameless corporation who has just been hired for the very important job of child of the CEO. And in this position, you perform all sorts of tasks as terribly as possible. The more property damage, the better. For a game of this genre, it's very fun and fresh. Every level is different and the world is extremely charming. It's definitely one of the best games that I've played this year. And if you haven't given it a chance, I recommend checking it out on the eShop right now or wait for a sale. It's frequently on sale. It's definitely worth your time though. In another strange 2020 move from Nintendo, the announcement for Paper Mario The Origami King was dropped on Twitter out of nowhere just two months before the game was actually released. What quickly followed was potentially the most nitpicking I have ever seen from Nintendo fans. I've only played a little bit of past Paper Mario games, but I know that Paper Mario fans are very particular about their mechanics. This announcement trailer was almost entirely comprised of cutscenes and interactions with the environment with two very quick and very vague shots of actual battle sequences, which 
we later learned weren't actually really that vague at all. That is just the whole battle sequence. So maybe the nitpicking wasn't so harsh after all. So fans didn't really like this game. More importantly, I didn't really like this game. It had all of the charm that you would expect from one of Nintendo's biggest IPs. The characters, the environments, and the world almost kept me going. There was just a lot of other things I would have rather played. The combat was almost fun enough to keep me going, but it was very formulaic. I spent my entire playtime with it just waiting for the combat to open up before realizing that was just it. That was the whole combat. The whole game reminded me of my playthrough of Super Paper Mario. I had a really fun time slowly trudging through it over the course of what must have been a year, but I'm way older now and I certainly don't have the time for that. I'm too busy pl playing anything else. Oh, 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 got more. That's not right. Oh, 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 he did the thing. Whoa! Oh, that's so cool. I, lo I love Mario. This game's a 10 out of 10. Continuing what was supposed to be the year of Super Mario Brothers, we have Super Mario Brothers 35. Of all of the games that came out this year, this is the one that made me fall in love with its mechanics the most, which isn't saying much because this year sucked. The original Super Mario Bros. for the NES is my favorite game of all time. It's the oldest game in my collection that I play through the most and probably the game that I unwittingly own the most copies of. So I'm already pretty biased towards this game because the base game it's built off of is great. But I love the new meta that the battle royale aspects brought. It's you versus 34 other players. Every time you kill an enemy, they get thrown to your opponent's games, similar to Tetris 99. You can also summon random power-ups with coins. So the game ends up being a collect-a-thon of coins and one-ups and a kill-a-thon of enemies. It makes you play the game in a totally different way and execute different strategies that make your playthrough totally different. Each level is followed by a mostly random level in the rotation you can help yourself by using warp pipes when available and choosing to warp to levels that are either easier or have more coins or one-up mushrooms or levels that have harder enemies, so they're harder on your opponents. I usually stick to 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, for easy coins at first, then jump to 1-4 for some Bowser kills. 4-2 is also great for the warp if available. It gets a lot more stressful towards the end game and a lot more fun as a result. Barreling through iconic Mario levels with hordes of enemies against a handful of other players doing the same thing is exhilarating. When it gets down to two or three players left, any false move is certain death. And these matches could go on for a while, but I get it, it is just Super Mario Brothers. Most people don't get the appeal and Super Mario 35 was kind of a flash in the pan success when it first dropped. Not to mention, it is straight up dying on March 31st, 2020. It's a free download if you have a Switch Online subscription, so I implore you to give it a shot. If you gave it a shot once and didn't really get it, try my strategies I mentioned briefly in this video. And if you want more info, I have a whole video that goes way more in depth on the meta of Super Mario Brothers 35 that you can watch right here and maybe then you might actually like the game. Can you tell that I really like this game? But as much as I liked it, I know it's not the best game that came out this year. Can you accumulate debt in it? No, I didn't think so. We're still waiting for a sequel to Breath of the Wild that was announced in June of 2019. But in the meantime, we have Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity a sort of prequel to Breath of the Wild that provides some welcome backstory and a change in play style. It's a combat focused hack and slash with a lot of mashing. It's actually really fun. Each character has different abilities that keeps the combat fresh and you can switch between them on the fly. However, I liked it to stick to Impa. Her Naruto multiplier move is like super overpowered and really fun to use. Holy sh 
I got five of them. I just did that for no reason. Oh my god, there's so many guys! Dude, there's so many of these guys. It's not like the Zelda you love, but it's definitely worth a shot. There's a free demo on the eShop that's around two hours long, and your save file carries over to the main game, so you can pick up right where you left off. It's a fantastic game, even with all the frame dips. What do you expect from a game with hundreds of enemies on screen at once running on an Android tablet? In August of 2019, Nintendo had an Indie World showcase that was pretty much uneventful, except for Fogs, which stuck out to me the most for some reason. I think I was mesmerized by the art style or the dopey double-headed dog flopping around. I finally got to play it at PAX East this year in late February before the world ended. Hey, remember like events? Anyway, I loved it then too. Now you can get your hands on it and try it yourself. It's a physics-based action puzzle game. It can be played single player where each thumbstick controls a different dog head or it can be played multiplayer, which I think is the preferred way to play. It's tons of stupid fun. Do they bark when you move or is that you got, I'm literally, it's literally That's a smash awesome. button. So yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can not bark and just, just move. But what's the fun in that? Yeah. <laughs> it's not the most polished thing. Being a physics based game, it does have its share of jank, but that's part of the charm. It's also out on Switch, but if you happen to have an Xbox with Game Pass, it's included in the Game Pass subscription, so maybe give it a try there first. All right, before we get into Animal Crossing, I wanna quickly run through a bunch of games that almost made it to the list. Everything here is a great game. It's just, you know, there's greater games. Clubhouse Games is a great collection of party games. I had a lot of fun with this one, playing with friends. It's just not as noteworthy as some of the others. Rogue Company was almost a great addition to the Switch, but I tried three times to squat up with friends and it failed to connect all three times, so the game is broken. I think Mario Kart Home Circuit deserves to be considered a game. You spend most of your playtime looking at your screen anyway, and it's a lot more fun than it has any business being. It just didn't make the cut. I did not play Doom Eternal, so sorry about it. I also did not play Hades. I know, I know. Listen, I'm sure if I did, it would be pretty high on this list. It seems great, but this is my list. These are the games that I played, so take it or leave it. I recently played Super Meat Boy Forever, and it's one of the best games that I played this year. The fact that it's an auto runner doesn't bother me at all. Most of the time when I'm playing a game like this, I hold right and run anyway, so this just removed the need to do so. The problem for me is that it's $20 and it's only four hours. So it's hard to put it up against the likes of like Animal Crossing. For $20, I'd like to see a little more depth. And finally, Among Us, which was so close to being on here. It came out all the way back in 2018, but just now exploded in popularity. It also just recently received a Switch port, which is why we're even talking about it at all. And it has retained its $5 price point. No Switch tax. Admittedly, I've never played the Switch port. I've only played it on PC. I'm a little concerned about how tasks are executed because it looks like you use the thumbsticks as a mouse, but the tasks aren't really what make this game great anyway. It's about the social aspect, and what made me take it off the list is the lack of voice chat. I mean, I'd probably be using Discord anyway, but voice chat is what makes the game fun in the first place. You should definitely play it, but the Switch version isn't exactly going to be the best version. Uh, I didn't see Bob once, I don't think. I'm going I went to, to the greenhouse. <laughs> I'm booking a flight right now. I'm, I'm booking a flight to Texas to strangle you like or Simpson. You should play all of the games that I mentioned here because, like I said, they're all at the very least good games. But there are gooder ones, some gooder -er than others, and the goodest one is Animal Crossing. There's a segue for you. I didn't know if Animal Crossing was going to be my type of game. On paper, it's not. I don't do simulation games. I don't want to walk around town asking people how their day is going. 
when I previewed the game at PAX, nothing connected at all. I wasn't interested in the collectathon. I wasn't interested in the museum, which was a big deal announcement at the time. I figured I would have more fun messing around with my friends, and I was right. Animal Crossing is about making your own fun, kind of like Minecraft. The core mechanics of the game itself aren't inherently fun, it's what you make of it that's special. I found myself on the grind for certain weird items, connecting with friends in the real world over the game, and meeting up virtually to trade goods made early quarantine a little less bleak. I decided I wanted to turn my island into an urban landscape. That was my end game. I was very happy with what I was able to accomplish, but once that was all settled, I pretty much abruptly stopped playing. None of the updates really interested me. The winter update looks really cool, but I'm not about to spend any more time on Butt Island. I'm good. Like I said, this isn't really a game that I'd normally be interested in. It kind of reminds me of Pokemon. I don't normally play RPGs, but for whatever reason, I give it all a pass because I'm interested in the cute animals. Same goes here with Animal Crossing. I'm not normally into this social simulation or whatever the hell type of game this is. But yeah, let's trade arcade cabinets, sure. Let's build a YouTube studio, I'm into that. But on top of all of this, Animal Crossing is the Switch game of the year outside of my own selfish reasons. It came out right when America was in the depths of the quarantine depression. I mean, we still are, but We've kind of accepted it as our new norm now, which is incredibly sad, but life is incredibly sad. As stupid as it sounds, Animal Crossing gave people a literal island to escape to, and a whole cast of virtual friends to check up on and who would check up on you. But more than that, it was a way to connect with real world friends. You didn't even need to be there to play with them. It gave me an excuse to text friends I haven't talked to in a while to ask about items I saw on their Instagram stories or something. This game came out exactly when the world needed it, and it also sold like a billion copies. I'm sure it would have done well on its own, but the circumstances surrounding its release added a modifier on top of that and awarded it legendary status in my book. If you want to hear more Game of the Year 2020 talk for games on other consoles, we did a whole Game of the Year 2020 tier list over on our podcast channel, Wolf Den Podcast. Believe it or not, Animal Crossing is just my Switch Game of the Year. It's not my overall Game of the Year. My overall Game of the Year is Call of Duty Warzone. Now imagine having to pit Animal Crossing New Horizons against Call of Duty Warzone. <laughs> Anyway, what do you guys think about all of the Nintendo Switch games that came out this year? Where would you rank them? What is the one that you think is the best or stands out the most against all of these other games? You can leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and you know, all of this other social media garbage. A lot of the clips from this video were taken from twitch.tv slash wolfden, where I live stream myself playing these games, but also, youtube.com slash wolfden clips where we take those twitch streams and put them into bite-sized chunks for you so if you liked what you see and you want more gameplay you can go over there as well there's plenty of content to keep you occupied thank you skillshare for helping support this channel even still after all of those ads that i've done but of course the most important thing that you could do to help support this channel is subscribe make sure you're subscribed so you actually get these videos in your sub feed and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe would be interested in the Game of the Year talk. Maybe they want some new games for the Switch and they haven't played all of these. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good New Year. I appreciate you being here. Goodbye.